Is she open minded? Any idea? She's like, why would I want to just have sex with you? That's a big son of a gun, John. Oh my gosh. Well, not as big as I thought, but he's alright. Get in there! Get in there. Yeah. Good fish. And that's, that's what you call the slop. That sucker. I say right, right along the duckweed down, right up against that, and this is why you're going to need a stiff, heavy rod. This is seven six medium heavy rod, uh, made by Yoder's Custom Rods. Of course, I get my rods custom built here, but there's current in here. We're actually, looking down, seeing the weeds kind of bend over, and uh, I think this current's mixed that with the duckweed and the hydrilla sitting here. Perfect combination to start flipping around punch it. I can't tell you something I was good at a couple years ago, but I feel like I'm pretty proficient now, and I really got to credit two people. Two people really were instrumental in helping me figure that out. Teddy Bradley and Carrie Fry. They helped me make a couple instructional videos on how to do it effectively. Links to those are below. But you're going to see in this video just punching away, and I do mean it's, it's a lot of punching. People call it flipping, but the, the purpose is, or the idea behind it is that you take a heavy oh, a weight, Texas rigged, with a heavy weight on it, and you throw it into the slop. You need a heavy weight just to break the surface of the slop, and you get some fish to bite underneath that. <laughs> Other birds like, ah, I like this. Now you gotta make me want to do that kind of fishing. Ah, yes, sir. Look at that one. Woo! That's a good one. Actually, it's not not uncommon to us all did today. Or on that fish there, I pa passed, it, passed it into those arrowheads and I actually saw the pads just shake. So the fish is either getting scared off by me or it was swimming in there, darting in there to eat it. Luckily it was there to eat it. This is a dynamite tactic in the heat of the summer. Anytime you got slop, vegetation, bunch of lily pads for the bass to hide out underneath. I think all setups are fairly simple, but, but here's mine. Now I'm gonna point something out here. I'm gonna point something out that's really important. Two things I think are real important. Number one that gets overlooked a lot is this bobber stop. This bobber stop right here, which is going to keep the weight in place. And I, I typically put it about an eighth inch above where I want that weight. But you can see that bobber stop, I can adjust it. And oftentimes when you set the hook, that stop will go up. Anything different. Anything different. What's that? Right here, this is where the lily, lily pads come out and it's very sparse. Got one bite over here, but come here, something, something a little bit different. That's what I'm always casting to. I'm I like to use three quarter ounce weight, but the reality is I'm gonna use whatever weight's necessary to break, punch through that slop. If I need an ounce or an ounce and a quarter, that's what I'm going to use. I use 418 flipping hooks. There is a link to that below, those below, and in fact, even a promo code to save you some money on it. There are a number of different flipping hooks on the market today. I use a Vector Mayhem flipping hook. Just got onto those recently. Three out or four out, I mashed the hook size up to the baits I'm using. But here's the real key to me that bobber stop, but then also the hook, the, excuse me, the knot. Teddy Bradley taught me this a snell knot. Now the snell knot, the advantage is this. Once that weight comes down and hits it on the hook set, it pops up, which is going to give you a much better hook penetration on the top of that fish's mouth. You set that hook, that weight's gonna come down and hit that hook. There are a gazillion different baits on the market to use for this technique. Uh, the Berkeley Pit Boss, Chigger Craws, you name it. There's a, there's a ton of them out there. Myself, I tend to go with dark colors. This is a little too light for me. I typically like green pumpkin or even black and blue. very high energy tactic. I want to encourage you to make as many pitches and casts as possible. I just think about basic math. If you make 300 pitches, you're going to hit three different 300 targets instead of 100. So you increase your odds of getting bit. Generally speaking, I cast my bait into that slop, make one or two pops, 
and then pull, reel it right back in and cast back out. My hard gear here. I'm going to use a high speed reel. I like something in the eights because once I set the hook, I want to bring that fish up to the surface and bring it back to me as quickly as possible. Because even though I'm using 50 pound braid line, if that, suck, if that big bass gets down below in those pads and stumps and sticks, whatever, it can snap your 50 pound braid. Which is also why I need a heavy, strong rod. I use a seven foot six medium heavy action rod, custom made actually, by Yoder's Custom Rods. You can see he recognizes the hunter. Stick. Dude, do you not like catching fish? Is that like your... That's what you call being laid on the hook set. Stink. That was a good 13 pounder, John. Gosh, man, he's not very big, but he's strong. Just flipping, just flipping along the edges here in the morning. I don't think those fish are stacked up in it yet. You can see something surface there. So I'm going to flip along the edges. Thanks for tuning in. Till next time, we'll see you on the water.